And of course, you know, you always want to thank your visitors for their participation in their visit. And that's where, you know, you can refer them to the website, uh, those types of things. So that would be uh, a, a nice way to do that. And remember, you are the face of what is happening here. You know, it's you. It's not, you know, once this is kind of taken place, we have a schedule and you're out there, you're the one representing and making this happen, you know. So you're, you're cohorts here are together, you're on your team. Okay, so this one is kind of more geared toward practice to say parks world, so we're going to see what that says. And <laughs> so basically the same thing I just kind of mentioned, you know, um, you know, we have the signs in place. If all we wanted to do was just put those signs up there, we wouldn't have, you know, Max wouldn't have given you the introduction that he gave you. He heard people say they want more information. So how you present your role and your personality, that's what's making it memorable. When they go down to the Redwoods from here and they're in a group ranger talk and they're like, oh man, I wish that person that was at Redfish Rocks would be here giving you this talk. And that's legit. I mean, people really do think that, you know. And this could also be the first place they stop in Oregon ever in their entire life. You know, and you're going to be the one that makes that memory. So that's kind of the, just ex, ex, uh, expanding on that just a little bit. So you become that person. So a few of those things, like, you know, what, what do we want, you know, like, you know, we're priding uniforms. If something happens to your uniform, uh, let us know. We'll try and, you know, make, make an adjustment. We could maybe get you a new one, you know, like, all these kinds of things. Sometimes I, I kind of throw this stuff in there because people are living in their RVs and they, you know, they come out and they're like, oh yeah, you know, so all these kinds of things, you know, can play a, a component in a personality. So there can only be one first impression. All right, so interpretation. We talked about really what that is and how, um, you know, interpretation isn't necessarily just laying out the facts, you know. The Redfish Rocks has 3.7 square miles of you know surface area, and it is there to be a no-take area. You know that's not really going to do it. And so entertainment, oh, out there in the water, there's all these fun things, you know. So we don't want to be you know, these types of things. So what are you? You're not out there for enforcement reasons. You can be more of an informant, as we'll kind of say. So if you see something that's going on that would be a 911 or some kind of violation, that's not what we're asking you to do is to enforce the rules. You know? So you're no doubtedly going to see and observe things that are not legal. But that's, that's not what your roles are. You're not a machine, you know, you kind of said with the panels and stuff like that. And no one likes to know it all. So sometimes you just have to take a grain of salt and like listen to somebody else because there's always somebody in the crowd that wants to tell you their story after you've told them your story, you know? So if you kind of keep going back and forth, then you're not going to really get me tracked. So an interpreter is a good host. So somebody that's welcoming, you know, think about, you know, going over to somebody's home as, you know, I'll take your coat, you know, like, here, here's a great place to sit, can you off the water, you know, that almost types of things aren't going to actually happen out there, but, you know, inviting them and then sharing your message is something that can happen. So they feel connected to the resource after they left, you know, uh, and you might be, you know, offered that donation and, you know, Jeanette's going to have to, you know, we're going to have a donation box or whatever. Um, appreciate why this, this place is important. And uh, this, is, this is one that you will know that you've made a lot of connection and success, is if the visitor themselves has now like been hooked and they are there and they want to share what they know, or they're from South Carolina and they have a marine reserve that was scallops, and the scallops are just doing wonderful because of the same process. So that is, uh, a tip to, to you know say hey I'm, I'm actually doing what I should be doing and that's kind of it for that part of the presentation there um, I did did want to kind of have two other uh, powerpoints I rail through but I did want to mention a couple notes I was thinking about while I was listening to the video um, you know we heard 
that the Marine Reserve is kind of, uh, you know, it, it, it is a no-take area, but it isn't a no-use area. So, you know, looking at the positive spin on it, yes, it did have an economic impact on fishermen. We heard that. <coughs> we heard that it is a no-take area. But that doesn't mean that you cannot use that area. We heard that people can transit through it. We know that it's a living laboratory. We know that people can recreate in it, scuba dive, and, and explore. In fact, just the other day, I was out there uh, doing uh, a black oyster catcher survey. We found a bird. Last year, we didn't find a bird. I'm going to be taking the Smurf crew out on the 8th of June to recover the Smurf. I'm going to be doing that all season long because the urchin population apparently has gotten to the point where it makes more sense for commercial fishermen to take that job versus the job of researching right now. So I, as a volunteer, will be doing that with OSU. Um, so it isn't an unusable area. There is a lot of use still in that area. So if we want to spin a message of no take, no use, it might not you know, be a completely accurate side of the story. You know? I mean, there is some no use in it. And also crab, I mean, clam. Uh, it was designed to work. It's not a reserve, but adjacent to the reserve, yeah, you can clam. Yeah, you right inside that, you can actually clam. Yeah, and so I was going to, well, I mean, I appreciate you bringing that up. I, I was going to kind of cover the, the boundaries of the reserve. So there's three organizations that have been identified by the legislature as being designated to sort of manage the marine reserve process. So, um, you know, Max was kind of talking about how this is a program that we hope to get funded again and things like that. So there's a lot of excitement up and down the coast about what you're participating in. So you can feel good about being like the pioneers of this process. Um, and uh, so the other four marine reserves have similar groups to the Redfish Rocks community. They have their own level of development and some are, um, you know, just more kind of just acknowledging that the, the process could be there and some are very developed also. But the three organizations that the state recognizes as the managing groups of the, of the Marine Reserve uh, is, of course, ODFW, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. They handle the bulk of what people think of as the Marine Reserve management process. Department of State Lands, uh, they're like across the state in the territorial sea, which is out to three miles, they have control of the underwater land. So they're you know, the, the sea. So once the extreme low tide would be met, that land underneath, or I guess it's seafloor, goes out three miles, and it's a varying line because of the way the coast is, is underneath the Department of State lands. From the extreme low tide to the extreme high tide, which high tide extreme does change, and it's defined in statute because cliffs fall and trees grow and wind changes, things like that. So that all happened through the beach build process. So that particular strip of land along the coast is known as the ocean shores, and that's under the Department of Parks and Recreation. So this particular red res Redfish Parks Reserve starts at the extreme low tide. So Oregon State Parks doesn't have any necessarily jurisdiction over how it's controlled or management of this particular marine reserve. DSL and ODFW are the two agencies that would. Uh, and so what Jeff was saying is that the clam bed or the rocky area over here by Rocky Point is outside of the reserve. So it's right up to the edge of it and it's open. And that was one of the public comments that I actually made over in the, uh, the library, the Freedom of Speech Room. I wrote that down as one of the things, and I'm sure others did too, but that was one of the things. I used to go over there and clam until I got tired of having sand on my nails trying to dig out the clams through all the rock. My hands, if you ever have done that, your hands go numb, and then before you know it, you have sand jamming up underneath your fingernail beds, and then when they come Unnumb, you're like, ah, you only have like two gapers <laughs> because it's such a pain <laughs> to get the clams. 
So that's that's the story there. Um, okay, so I wanted to kind of touch on that, that you know, as you're making these comparisons and you're bridging your ideas and you know analogies, in my opinion, it is not an unusable area. It is a no tape area. All right. So that means no biological, whether living or once living, can be taken from that area. The marine protected area does have salmon trawling and does have crab harvest. The rest is supposed to be untouched. So, you know, so that, that's just one thought that you can, you can potentially use. But what you're really doing is you're exposing these people to the idea of the marine reserve process and what it could afford. It doesn't necessarily mean it will, it's just what it could do. So, I'm going to leave that right there. And then I wanted to talk about So here, here we are. <laughs> this is some like examples of ways that information could be out outlined. So has anyone ever heard of Indian paintbrush? It's a wildflower. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here, here's a definition of Indian paintbrush. It's you know fairly stalagmites. Now, so this is kind of information and in an informative method. I'm not going to read it for you. I'll try and bring that up to, uh, to a larger. I know there's a shortcut. Okay, so you know, we go up and down, we see, you know, slide this grow. So interpretive. Okay, so there's no longer any uh, remaining anything remaining of the old cooked house. There is long table covered with brightly colored tablecloth where miners ate three hearty meals a day. Imagine, this is a key word right here. The breakfast time aroma of fresh hot coffee brewing and the sound of eggs and bacon sizzling on the grill. And then we're also served hot cakes, fried potatoes, and toast with homemade jam. Okay, so you can change this back to, here's where the old cookhouse sat was made out of logs. Mm. You know, so that, that gives you the same information. But here, we're imagining what it was like to be in the old cookhouse made out of logs. So if you think about the Marine Reserve, we have some panels over there. One of the panels talks about leaving that particular site where the panel's at and making a journey out into the marine reserve. That panel is very interpretive. The other panels are, are also equally interpretive, but they don't have like such a story. So that's something that you could try and build into your, your talk. And then here we have the Clark's Not Tracker. You know, it's just it's just another another one, you know, basically the way it is. I'll read it for yourself here in a second. So Anyway, that's that's kind of uh, the difference between, as I mentioned in the first presentation, there that like we're just giving out information, or are we trying to bridge it to an interpretive level. So that that's giving you that relate, reveal, and provoke sense of what interpretation is incorporated. Inclusive of. Okay, so last part, yeah. Had one more, but I don't see it. So we're just um, it's, it's more state parks to you anyway. So um, this is the Oregon State Parks like fun website. The other one is more like our rules and stuff like that. And if you ever want to go there, you can come over here and you can see how the state likes to just kind of just oh, oh no, we don't need that one. We want the fun one. So that's the stateparks.org over here. This is the stateparks.gov. <laughs> so if you want to do find a neighboring park and you want to know some information about it, you can come here to the find a park section. And there's a couple different ways to navigate. 
You can look at all the parts up and down the coast because we, I just mentioned that the whole entire coast is essentially a state park, the ocean shore. But all these little waysides and all these little points right here are labeled here. So you have to zoom in to find it out. You can, you know, of course, go by little different ways or you can just grab here and drop down and, you know, whoops, see, see, um, and get, get a particular park. So in our neck of the woods, right down here on the west edge of the of the North America, we have um, quite a few state parks in our in our area. So I am trying to do this. Gives you 
the background on what what's out there and Jeff was motoring right along here. I never knew that till today. And he's like, ding, that's the edge. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. So uh, so yeah, so it's very visible, uh, you know, and it's and so I'm gonna use I think control plus and we can zoom in a little bit on that. Get a little tighter there. Okay, so again, what we're seeing here is the green, the, that's representing Highway 101. You know, we kind of see Humbug, Battle Rock, your home base, right? And uh, Fort Worth Head, some of the, so right through here would be that inner tidal zone and not part of the reserve. As we move out, okay, then we have again Department of State land <coughs> under the water and Oregon Fish and Wildlife Managing, all the uh, species, so you know, anything that's basically living out there, uh, with the exception of marine mammals. So, and then what you have is a territorial sea line, which isn't represented on here so much. But because the way the land sort of forms has two tips, so you have rocky point here, coal point down here, the territorial sea is three miles, nautical miles, from the shore. So nautical miles are slightly larger than a normal mile. Uh, and, uh, and so it makes kind of a whale tail, or like a V, the actual territorial sea line. But I guess for enforcement purposes, it's yeah. an easier fix to just draw straight <coughs> across. Mm -hmm. It edge. goes out all the way to the edge of the NPA. The oh, further. Yeah, 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 you're right. Thank you. So, yes, yeah, yeah. So, the, uh, the, the, the nautical map. is out here. I'm sorry. Apologize. Yes. So, it's extending out to the NPA. Uh, so, the black that you see here are actually under the jurisdiction of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So this is part of the Oregon Islands Marine or National Wildlife Refuge. So that's all the islands up and down the coast. So like if you're from Little Beach, the Road Reef is part of that. Uh, Battle Rock is not actually, but there's a few others that aren't. So Haystack Rock at Camp Beach, I was told was. Um, so and then down here you kind of see there's some darker rocks here too. And Island Rock is out there. That is also part of the National Wildlife Refuge. So there's, uh, I forget, it's over 300, I believe. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, management happening of the, of the sea and of the space and things like that. So until you become like very familiar with it all, I look through a lot of the research. I mean, I was just trying to be, you know, perfect on that, but I missed them. <laughs> so there's a lot of layers to look at. Um, and, uh, and and so you know you can you can let people know or you know there's certain components of your your talk and your presentation and things like that that until somebody asks you you know it's not necessarily something that you just need to dive right into you know and so as Tom and Dave present other information today you know just think about. I'm going to kind of leave, the, leave it with that, because um, now they're going to give you what, what am I going to talk about? So I was kind of trying to give you how, how to maybe present it, just a suggestion. Um, but remember that people are there, they want to hear a story, they're on vacation most likely, or they're stressed out because they need to get somewhere else. And so, you know, reading your audience and telling them a little bit of a story is what they're most likely going to enjoy. So, that's about it. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Not. Um, I smell lunch. It looks like lunch is over there. Lunch is arrived. I think we're ready for lunch. So maybe we get back together at one. Is that too late? Did you say? Is that good? I think that's fine. Yeah. Enjoy lunch. Enjoy Port Orphan. Take a walk on the beach if you have time. If you want to, we'll get back together at one for the next section. Yeah, yeah there's a, uh, just so you know, it's it's actually kind of nice out right now. And there is a picnic table right out here. Please take advantage of that if you'd like to be outside right now for lunch. All right.
you said you could email the uh, reservation thing that you were doing to tell those kids.